Garcelle. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Great. Thanks for joining us at Glitter Magazine. My pleasure. Wow, you're, you look beautiful. Your background looks oh, beautiful. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. So I'm just going to jump right in. You are thriving right now during this pandemic from everything from author to podcaster to actress to host. Um, just congratulations on so many accomplishments. Um, I know you've been in the industry for quite some time, and we've seen you from the Jimmy Fox show and now the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills to coming to America. So can you tell us about how you got your start in modeling and acting? Sure, absolutely. I was like around 15 or so. My mom, people started telling my mom, she's beautiful, she should model. And we didn't know, you know, what that was, how you get about it or anything like that. And um, when we moved to Miami, a friend of mine was doing um, a orange juice commercial. And he said, do you want to be an extra? And I was like, what's an extra? And um, we shot for two days on the beach in Miami. And on the second day, I got the nerve to ask one of the leads of the commercial was this beautiful black girl. And so I went up to her and I said, I want to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And she wouldn't have, she was like, girl, you're on your own, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I found out what agency she was with and I decided randomly it was in Fort Lauderdale that I was going to drive there and, you know, show up and see, how do you do it? Can I get an appointment? How does it work? Yes. And on my way there, I stopped at a red light and I looked out the window to look at my makeup and I decided I wanted to add more lip gloss. So as I'm reaching for my purse to get my lip gloss, a hand comes in this car and scares the hell out of me because oh, I wasn't right. expecting it. I'm the only one in the car. And it was the lady who had stopped behind me at the stoplight. She, 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 and it was the actual agency I was on my way to go see without an appointment. Nice. <laughs> so once that happened, I started modeling with them just for like a few months. I, um, I leaned forward, scouts the country looking for new talent. And she came to Fort Lauderdale and she told my mom I should move to New York to begin my career. And all I needed was a toothbrush, which was crazy. <laughs> yes. um, so I ended up moving to New York at 17, living with Eileen Ford until the model's apartment had a vacancy. And that's how it all started. Nice. Um, and you and Jamie Foxx go way back. So what was it like to book uh, the Jamie Foxx show? And what were some of the highlights from that time? You know, I didn't really know Jamie Foxx, Jamie Foxx, you know, so when I when I went for the audition, he actually saw me in the download video. And that was when you could call in videos. And he was like, you don't know how many times I requested that video. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so when I booked the job, I was just like surprised. I had never really done comedy, but I think what gave me a, a head up against the other girls is that I wasn't trying to compete with him. Mm -hmm. You know, my character was just there to support, you know, the laughs that he brings. Mm -hmm. And it was the most amazing experience because one, I hadn't done a sitcom and I had just taken an improv class. So that improv class set me up to work with Jamie Foxx because we would rehearse during the week. Mm -hmm. But the minute they brought in the audience, he thrived on the energy of the audience. So he would, you know, do improv. So if I hadn't done that class, I don't know if I would have been ready and open for him. Mm -hmm. I really feel like everything leads me to where I'm supposed to be. Yes, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> what are your some of your fondest memories from booking the original role that you had in Coming to America? Wow, talk about being green. I was modeling in New York. I actually auditioned for the part of Lisa. I had no business doing that because I knew nothing. Um, and luckily, John Landis, the director, called my agency and said, listen, if she really, she's not getting that part, but there's other parts that we need. Mm -hmm. And if she really wants to get into film and television work, this would be a great experience for her. And I didn't know what hit your mark, action, rolling, none of that. I didn't know what it meant. Yes. So it was truly an experience that at the time, I was just so happy to be learning and to be around so many black faces working on a movie, right? And let alone with Eddie Murphy, it was just an experience and it's a gift that keeps on giving because uh, 30 years later, here we are, it's crazy. Yes, and then the new film has so much, um, so many themes of um, 
female uh, empowerment and black girl magic. What was it like to be a part of that representation? Uh, you know, we had that in the original, but it's like tenfold in this one. So what did that feel like for you? First of all, it's I'm thrilled to be alive to be in the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a feat unto itself. Um, it's great. I mean, any time where you can get a role that makes an impact on someone, I think the film has become nostalgic, historic, um, and anytime you get to a second chance at that, I mean, we were all so giddy on the set because we couldn't believe here we were having an opportunity to sort of relive it. And, you know, the new cast brings their flavor. It's just the old with the new. Mm -hmm. And the film is coming at a time when so many families need a feel good movie and it's just so refreshing. Uh, you know, they're going to get to see um, such, just such a wonderful family film. Um, what do you hope viewers take away from that? You know, I just want families to sit together because even though we're spending a lot of time because we're, you know, COVID times where I want families to sit, have fun, get your snacks, laugh together, look at each other for the parents who remember the original, mm -hmm. um, just to enjoy it and, you know, escape from everyday life. Life can be hard. The last year or so has been tough on so many levels for a lot mm -hmm. of people. And I think just escapism and having a good time, I think it's great. At first, I was a little bit like, dang, I'm sorry we're not going to be in theaters. I'm sorry we're not going to have a premiere. But at the same time, I feel like a lot more people may see it now because they're seeing it from the comfort of their home. Mm -hmm. And you've worked with some equally uh, as great actors, Forrest Whitaker, Eddie Murphy, Queen Latifah. What's your secret to success and longevity in the industry? I don't give up. <laughs> I don't give up. Uh, in an industry where you get a lot more rejections than you get, yes. I think for me, one, I've been able to diversify what I do. I think I'm not just an actor. And nowadays, we don't we can be so many things, you know, we're not boxed in anymore. So the fact that I've been able to write books and host television shows and produce has given me sort of the, the longitude and the boldness to do whatever it is that I, that I want to do or want to create. So for me, I love what I do. And I think when you're an artist, you're an artist in a lot of different areas. And I've been able to tap into that and mm -hmm. resilience is a big is a big deal. And I also think being an immigrant in the United States has given me the drive mm -hmm. because the opportunities that my mom was able to give me by bringing me here does not go um, lightly with me. So I try to do as much as I can to prove like, you know, we're worthy. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, you know, don't give up on the immigrants. Yes. Um, I know you get asked this quite a bit, but um, it was, you know, it meant so much for so many to see you representing on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills as one of the first Black uh, females on that show. Can you just tell us, you know, what that meant to you and, and knowing that it meant so much to us? It, it meant a lot and I felt the pressure. <laughs> Let me tell you, I felt the pressure and it wasn't until maybe a week before we started shooting that I was like panicked and I called my girlfriend Nicole and she had to talk me off the ledge because I'm like, I am like, people are waiting to see. And what I really, at the end of the day, I really wanted to be authentically myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't want anybody to put a label on me. Like they do a lot of times we get, you know, angry black women or this and that. And I really wanted to be myself. And if somebody checks me, I will check you back. But I'm not, it's not my norm just to come at people just for the sake of it. Yeah. So it's been, a, it's been an interesting balance of, you know, opening up my life um, to a certain extent, my kids. And but at the same time, I feel like I've been able to keep my integrity, which is mm -hmm. important. And filming overlapped the Black Lives Matter protests. How is it you know, why was it important for you to share your story uh, even briefly with um, the cast and the viewers? My story is how I walk in life. My story is my history. So whenever anyone doesn't understand or can't have compassion, that's because you don't know where I've been. You, don't, you haven't walked in my shoes. And so it's really important for us to continue to have conversations. And I want my kids to feel proud of being, you know, Black and, and, and know what we're all about. And I think George Floyd, COVID, quarantine all contributed to people being more woke now mm -hmm. if you will we always we always knew our plight
but now they know our plight. And I think it's turned a lot of people around, which is great. There's still more movement we need to do. But I think it really took something like this for us to have compassion and go, really, is that how it's been? I never noticed or, you know, I would see things and I would look away and I feel like people are having conversations now more than ever. Mm -hmm. So I am hopeful that um, we're going in the right direction. Yes. Uh, a little bit of a fun question. You were bringing the smoldering looks at, from the hair to the to the fits to the glam. Who are some of your favorite designers to wear? I have so many, but you know what? I, we all can name the big names, mm -hmm. but I also like paying homage to new people. Like the fact that I used uh, Giovanna Louis, who's a Haitian uh, designer for my reunion look. I really feel it's important to sort of spread the love because there's new and upcoming people. Yes. And, uh, you know, from, let's say, oh, from Versace to Gucci to Zara to Target, that's, mm -hmm. that's me all day, every day. Very nice. And you uh, stated that you are confirmed for the next season. Are you excited? Is there anything that you can tease? Uh, hold on to your seats. It's, <laughs> it's going to be a bumpy ride. We just wrapped season 11 and um, it's a lot of, it's a lot of what people expect, but also different, which is really cool. And we have a new housewife as well, who's Asian. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of newness and a lot of fun. Yes. And we can do extravagant trips. So we went to Tahoe, we went to San Diego. We <laughs> made it work. But it's all real life, you know, because we can't get on a plane and do anything too extravagant right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I've heard many people say this before. It's just something about you. Um, you just, you're so confident and you have a very, you just have a non-petty personality, which was so nice to see on the show. How do you let things just roll off your back? You know, I think gratitude, really. I mean, I wake up every morning and I say, thank you, first thing before anything. And, uh, you know, there are days, obviously, I have hard days. There are days that I'm frustrated or sad or lonely like everybody else. But um, coming from gratitude, I know where I've been. I know where my family's been. And the fact that I get to live this life mm -hmm. that I never even dreamt it was too big for me to dream is uh, that can get me emotional every time I say it because I feel it. And uh, so therefore, listen, everybody can have a bad day, but in, we're breathing, we're healthy. That's the most important thing. Yes. And you're hosting, you've uh, co-hosted many shows in the past. Uh, how was it to be on The Real? And uh, what's that experience been like for you? I love it. It's my dream job. I've always, I'm chatty. You can't shut me up. <laughs> so it's always been on my bucket list. And even before acting, and I would say it over the years to my agents and my team. And they'd be like, but you're doing so great as an actor. Why would you want to host? And I kept on saying, guys, trust me. Mm -hmm. And finally, I get to do it on a daily basis. And the women of The Real are just what they are. They're real. They're fun. We have great conversations. I feel like there isn't another show that you get to see women of color, mm -hmm. especially now when our voices are really important, that we get to have the conversations that we we get to do and they pick on me and they, you know, Lonnie calls me the model, which, you know, I'm more than just a model. Thank you very much, Lonnie. Yes. But, um, <laughs> but we have a lot of fun and we have really great guests. We had Kamala Harris on the show recently. We, I mean, you know, it's real. We've had Malcolm X's mm -hmm. daughter. Uh, it's been really, really awesome. And we have to do it from home. So I haven't been able to hug the girls. We haven't touched each other. We've yeah. just been rolling like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And your podcast, Going to Bed with Garcelle, is fabulous. Uh, from your candidness to the banter to the celebrity guests, what can yeah. we, well, well, what do you enjoy most about podcasting and what can we look forward to in the next season? You know, I had never really paid attention to podcasts. And um, when we decided, my producing partner, Lisa Wilson, and I dis uh, decided we wanted to do this as a show. And we sold the idea to um, MGM and they were like, you know what, we're in quarantine, we can't do anything, let's do a podcast. So then I started to listening, uh, I started listening to podcasts and I'm like, there's something to it. So we launched Going to Bed with Garcelle season one and it was just pure fun and liberating. I have one celebrity, one real girlfriend. And we just, we take sex to another level. We talk about things that sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I go, oh my God, I can't believe I just said that. Yes. But I think that's the fun of it is just being able to be ourselves. Like when 
there's no cameras, there's no microphones. We talk like that, mm -hmm. you know, when we're having cocktails with our girlfriends and vent or talk about relationships. So it's great. And we just, uh, we're launching season two, February 18th. And we have Robin Thicke nice. as my first guest. And we have amazing lineup coming up. Mm -hmm. So you discuss yeah. relationships quite a bit on the podcast. What advice do you have for anyone looking for love during COVID? Should they wait? Should they, you know, be creative? Any you advice? Know, I think, yeah, I would say be creative. I really do. I say, you know, people now are having FaceTime dates. I had a FaceTime date a couple of months ago where we planned dinner and, you know, I had a cocktail. He had whatever he was drinking. And we actually yeah. talked it. You know, it's sort of like the new norm. I don't know if I'd go out and meet somebody randomly mm -hmm. during this time, unless, you know, they show COVID negative tests and all that stuff. But yeah. I think we've got to be creative a little bit because, yes. and I think it's never too late. Beverly Johnson just got engaged. Nice. I believe 60. So mm -hmm. there's hope for all of us. Yes. <laughs> so your new memoir, Finding My G-Spot, what can readers expect from that? <laughs> A little bit of everything, a little bit of my past. Um, I talk about my father, which I don't really delve into that too much about my, I think the lack of relationship with him has shaped into the men that I've chosen in my life. Um, it's a little bit of everything. What I aspire, it's inspiring and uh, aspirational, mm -hmm. if, you, if you will, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun read. And uh, so many women are um, discouraged from reinventing themselves, you know, a lot of times due to ageism. What advice do you have for women? Because you are the poster woman for doing it all. Um, I say don't give up. It's never, ever, ever too late to find your love, to find your career, to find yourself. I mean, you know, I'm always reading self-help books. I'm always trying to, you know, be a better person. You know, there are days where I feel like I have to apologize to my kids <laughs> um, for whether it's my mood or whatever, something that I've said, but I think it's never too late. I mean, you know what it's late when you're in that coffin. That's, that's when it's late. Otherwise, keep moving, keep striving. If you want to change your hair, if you want to change your, your look, and I just think that we just, we have to keep each other up and, and, and help motivate ourselves. And I think it's never, ever too late to be the new you. Okay. I have a couple fun questions. Uh, what are your favorite beauty products? Oh, I like basic stuff. I love Maybelline mascara. <laughs> I really do. Aquaphor. I use um, Epicurean uh, cleansing products. What else do I love? Becca Foundation. I've fallen in love with. I used to be a Bobbi Brown person, but mm -hmm. I love their, um, their foundation, the consistency. You can do a little or a lot. Um, what else do I love? Um, perfume. I say, you know, even though you're wearing a mask, people can't see you. I think a lasting perfume says a lot. They know when you're coming. They know when you're leaving. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a workout routine at all? I do Pilates. I haven't been good at it. I'm going to be completely honest. Quarantine 15 is real. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> I went to the doctor the other day. They were like, can you get on the scale? I said, can I get on backwards? <laughs> so I didn't mean to I see feel it. you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the only time I felt good about getting on a scale is when I was pregnant, but, um, yeah, I mean, I love Pilates, you know, going for a walk as simple as a walk, but I'm, I'm trying to, I'm making a conscious effort to get back into it. Mm -hmm. And last one, um, once it's safe to travel, where in the world is on your bucket list, bucket list to go next? I want to go back to Italy. I fell in love with Positano. I could also go back to Jamaica though, Negril, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. is pretty awesome. So uh, I can't wait till we can do things like yes. that. <laughs> and what's next for you? Oh my God, probably a rest. <laughs> probably you need a one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, what's next is producing more. I really want to get into that. And really also taking some time off because mm -hmm. I've been going nonstop. And I think yeah. it's also good to go to you know, recharge. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Your <laughs> hair, makeup, everything is flawless. Oh, thank you. What a compliment. <laughs> you as well. Yeah. I love your background too. So take care. Of course. Thank you so much. Thanks, Garcelle. Bye-bye.